Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, to the channel IT Simplified. I hope you're having a good time with your family and friends. In today's session on Azure, I'm here to talk about one of the services, which is a networking component called Azure DDoS Protection, or Prevention, you can call it. Uh, so today we'll look into what DDoS uh, protection is, and uh, we will also look into what are the steps we need to configure in order to prevent, uh, protect our services from this kind of attack. But before I do that, let's look at what DDoS attack is at a very high level and why you should be protecting it and what are the different services which are there within the Azure that you can utilize. So in simple term, a DDoS protection also called denial of services. If I deploy, say in this example, since we are talking about the cloud, I will take this example of the cloud, but this can be for a hybrid on-prem kind of scenario, it doesn't matter. So say in case I have this uh, web services, obviously it's a public facing. And uh, I have people who are trying to access this from different parts of the world, right? And these are all general customers. They are trying to access this and they're able to reach my web services. No problem. But uh, in a DDoS kind of attack, what happens is uh, the bad guys, they will try to create an artificial traffic. And because it's an artificial traffic, it will consume the bandwidth. My server, which has a limitation on how much traffic it can take because it has a specific amount of CPUs and RAM, it get overwhelmed. And all these good guys who are trying to reach, they're not able to access that uh, web page or that web services or the content which is hosted on that server. Now, you might ask a question, okay, so if it is uh, coming from uh, this person over here is a bad person, I can block him. But what happens if I have multiple bad actors who are trying to hack into a system or try to generate this uh, uh, artificial traffic from multiple places, right? Now that is where DDoS stand for. It is distributed denial of services. And uh, that is what we are trying to protect by using this service within Azure. And it comes in two flavor. It comes in basic and standard. Obviously basic is a limitation. Uh, it comes with that, but standard is a paid uh, paid services, and it goes by how many public endpoints we are trying to protect. So I think, if I might remember correctly, there is a fixed price for the first 100 public endpoints. When I say public endpoints, I'm talking about any services which is public facing. Uh, and anything more than that, obviously, there is a difference. So there's two components. One is the cost of the public endpoint, how many we are trying to protect, and then there will be also how much data getting analyzed. And I'll recommend that you can go through the Microsoft documentation and it can tell you the differences between the two basic and standard. But if you're trying to protect this kind of attack, you definitely need to go with the standard version. Now, this can help you in two ways. So one way it can help you out is that obviously it will protect your services uh, from this uh, DDoS kind of attack. The other thing is that it will also help to uh, mitigate the cost uh, uh, that is involved. So say, for example, uh, in my case, I have deployed the web services. On an average, it is costing me, I'm just taking a hypothetical number, $100, right? And in this, I have uh, scale sets. If you're not familiar with the scale set, scale set is one of the services within Azure that you can deploy, which automatically allows you to add the machines as your traffic goes, right? So say I can set the I can set the policy if my traffic reaches on this web server, say 70%, deploy another server, I can put the maximum and uh, minimum limit. Now, in case if I don't have a DDoS attack uh, protection, 
uh, it will keep on adding, right? Because these traffics are getting generated. Uh, these traffics are uh, prompting my server to add more because that is what I have configured. But in case I have a DDoS protection, Microsoft will make sure even if I uh, spin up all those uh, uh, servers which I don't need because of this kind of attack, uh, Microsoft will give us the money. So here you can save the cost, right? So not only from the protection, but also from the cost perspective. And also because we are consuming the bandwidth, which is not real, it is artificially generated. It will also, they will also uh, give us some money back. I think that's part of the SLA of uh, this uh, service. So it can also help to protect you on those, uh, in those kind of scenarios. Right, so that's important. But uh, sometimes there might be also a question. I already have a firewall in place. So what people they do is they already have maybe a firewall. They have a, a web application firewall. Do I still need uh, this protection? So the answer that I'll give to that is that it depends. Right, these are all complementary uh, services. So in case you have a firewall, if you have a WAF. Uh, it is not designed to protect you from a DDoS kind of attack. So if you want to have that kind of uh, protection, because you know when you deploy these uh, firewall, you need to have a public endpoint, and if these, <coughs> excuse me, this traffic is getting automatically generated, firewall uh, might not be handled it, and it can actually take down that uh, firewall. So uh, it is designed for specific kind of scenario. So definitely, if you need a uh, if you need a protection from this kind, you can uh, definitely have a DDoS protection. So these are all complementary services. So DDoS works with firewall. It also gels with Security Center and Log Analytics to give you a full full protection for your environment. Another thing is uh, that it works at the uh, you need to create a DDoS protection plan, and we'll actually look at. So you need to create a DDoS protection plan, and once that is created, you need to link that to the virtual network. And uh, you can you just need to create at the tenant level. And if you have multiple subscription underneath, it can be all applied. So you just create one plan, and it can be linked to uh, different subscription. You can have multiple virtual networks. It doesn't matter. You just need to create one time. So this is what DDoS protection is uh, on a very higher level and uh, how Azure can protect. And as I said, that it comes in two flavor, basic and standard. And you can go and look at the Microsoft documentation, what exactly is the differences between the two services. So let's look at what is the flow when we are trying to deploy this within the Azure environment. So let me flip over to my Azure subscription. And uh, in the global search bar, I can just do a search for DDoS protection plan. So let's go and click on this. I'll go and click on add. We'll give it a name. My subscription, deploy this in the resource group. I already have the name TDRG and my location is Canada Central and I'll create this. The deployment succeeded. So what I'm going to do is uh, I already have a uh, web services which is running in a virtual network. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to link this protection plan to that uh, uh, DDoS protection plan. So I'm going to go to the virtual network. I have a virtual network with the name TDRG VNet. Let me go and expand this. And if you see on the left side of the blade under settings, you have this DDoS protection. So I'm going to go and highlight this. And right now, as I said that uh, it is in basic state, you, it comes in two flavor, basic and standard. I'll move it to standard. And for the DDoS protection plan, I'll pick the one that we just created and click on the save button. Okay, so my protection plan was linked to the virtual network under which I have my web services, right? So let me just close this. So what I'm gonna do is uh, let's try this out. Uh, we'll try to simulate a DDoS kind of attack and see what happens within the uh, within this uh, DDoS protection plan and what kind of analytics that we get. And I forgot to add that in the back end, uh, Microsoft uses its reach, it uses its machine learning algorithms to differentiate between a DDoS attack or a genuine traffic. 
So all this is taken care of in the back end uh, by Microsoft for you. So let's go. And in order to test this, what I'm going to do is I will use an application. And I'll test this against the port number 80. So what I'm going to do is the target IP. So I have a web services already over here, right? So this is a web service which I've already deployed and I'm using the public IP of my and I'll try to create a DDoS kind of attack. So let me just go and flip over. So I'm gonna put this and uh, it's a TCP sync flood. That's what I'm gonna do. I will put the test size and the test duration I'll put is, uh, the minimum is 10 minutes. So let me just go and click on the start test. So I'm trying to send uh, the traffic. It is asking me for the Azure subscription ID, which I'm gonna provide. So I have given the permission by uh, adding my subscription ID for that application to do the testing. So if I go under my DDoS protection plan, you can see that it's saying DDoS stand protection plan can be found by selecting the protected public IP under the metrics plate. So under monitoring, you have the metrics. And uh, here I can give the scope for my DDoS plan. Right, and if I want to test this against my public IP, apply that metric namespace is public IP, the metric select metric for inbound bytes drop forwarded. So I can uh, select under what metrics I want, but it might take some time, right? Because we just started this attack. But the idea over here is I want to give you all this is taken care in the back end for you. You don't need to worry about managing and all that. You just create your protection plan, link that with the virtual network, and uh, it will be taken care. And as I said, that uh, Microsoft is using machine learning and it integrates these services with log analytic workspace and uh, security center to give you the charts, to give you a graphical uh, user interface also based on these charts and everything over here so that you can see what is happening from where the traffic, and it will differentiate the traffic between the good and the bad actors. But that is how uh, this uh, DDoS protection services work in Azure. And as I said that, it can complement your firewall, your WAF services if you have, if you have an application gateway or, or a front door, this can sit between uh, these two services and it will make sure that your data and your application is protected from this distributed denial of service kind of attack by the bad actors. So this was a quick overview on how you can utilize Azure DDoS within the Azure portal. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.